Hello and good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. As you'll see there, the US 30 still continues to move slightly higher after reaching an all-time high and closing an all-time high there uh, just last week. Uh, we're a, slight, a little bit on the wrong side today, but not by much. And as you can see, by Friday the 26th, we actually managed to uh, get a high there of 18,102. So that psychological 18,000 level has been uh, pretty much broken. Uh, and to be fair, if you're looking for a potential retracement level now, uh, you might be looking around oh, pretty much bang on 18,000 to be fair. So this is a level, a uh, potential pivot to be aware of going forward. If we break down and close below that, then that will open up a move back down to 17,895. I can see the Germany 30 is getting quite close to 10,000 again. And uh, the UK 100 is at 6610. So moving on to that UK 100 for a second, uh, on the right side of potential resistance at 65.89, so that now is expected to act as potential support. We're trading above both moving averages, and we've got a crossover on the MACD while the other technicals are still quite neutral. So the next potential uh, resistance to be aware of for the UK 100 is 66.86. Um, moving on to Japan 225, and dollar yen is around about 120. Uh, it's a very volatile day there. That candle is, uh, is quite correct there on the 29th of December. Um, it gives you a bit of an idea about where where we've been. Uh, so it has come off a little bit more uh, and then uh, kind of recovered a little bit of that loss there. Uh, after, um, actually I thought this would have been pretty much closed, but maybe as it's, it's open today, maybe it closes uh, by the end of the day as, as, a, as a cash product over in Japan. Um, but nevertheless, uh, 17,496 is the next potential support level where it looks like it can kind of bounce, which would also be that 21 period SMA. Longer term potential resistance is still around about 18,306. Um, but there's a lot of holidays in Japan. Uh, during the actual festive period, I wouldn't have actually expected Japan to have much more action between now and the start of January. Um, so maybe that's why there's thin volumes, extra volatility potentially there as well uh, to be aware of. So if we actually have a quick look at dollar yen, because the FX markets don't ever sleep in that instance, you can see, still see that we're drifting around about 120. We've been doing that over the last couple of sessions as well. Um, next potential resistance after that is going to be uh, the tip of this candle, 121. So actually let's go ahead and draw that on there as well, with a longer term potential resistance being 124, it's about 42. But some commentators believe this is going to be one of the ceilings that uh, dollar yen is likely to, uh, to retain. For the longer term, so um, I think I've, I think I've read somewhere today, in fact, that 117-ish uh, is going to be the potential floor, or 114 is going to be the potential floor, and 124 is going to be the potential um, ceiling for quite some time. So moving on to that, moving on to West Texas crude, we seem to be hugging around about $55 over the last couple of sessions, drifting over lower. Even issues in Libya are not supporting the crude oil prices uh, by anything um, that significant. Uh, break below that obviously opens us up to a move much lower. Uh, we're still looking at the psychological $50 level as the next potential support should $55 break and it closes below that. So moving on to gold just to finish things up. Uh, volatile session last couple of days, trading above uh, 11.86 cap potentially about 21 and 55 period SMA so the pressure still on gold here as usual strong dollar uh, interest rate aspects impacting or holding gold back potentially obviously we had a particularly good day here on the Friday the 26th um, but that's not um, it doesn't really massively change the whole game because we've, we've tried to rally up before and get pushed back down and fundamentals are still kind of stacked against gold in the short term so finishing up with your dollar and GBP USD uh, you can see that your dollar drifting lower still, targeting one spot 2047 as the next potential support. Um, if QE and an interest rate cut comes in the eurozone, that's obviously going to impact um, your dollar. But I think the ECB are very reluctant to actually do that unless they really, 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 really have to. So keep your eye on some of the macro data coming out of Europe to start off January to get a flavour of how that's going. Obviously, you've got the Greek elections today as well, um, which I think are expected to be finished around about 11 a.m. UK time, as in the result is due to be given around about then, which will give an idea if there could be any snap elections in Greece or not. Then finishing up with GBP USD, uh, trading below one spot 55, uh, 99, one spot 56. Pressure still on, one spot 5424 is still a potential support level to be aware of right there. And there's no massive economic data details out today. Fast forward on to Tuesday and you've got UK house prices uh, and then you've got uh, CCI in America. And if we go on to Wednesday, you've got unemployment data, uh, the housing index and um, more 
Petroleum data, which should be very useful if you're looking to trade West Texas or Brent there this week, and then that obviously brings us into the new year. As ever, keep you on the chart forum, making sense part of your late going forward, and join me again, uh, I guess, after the New Year's holidays to find out what happened next.